I've got one of the patches from the library loaded in, and in this video, we're gonna look at the orb. Now, we have a separate orb for each of the parts, and we're on part one now, so I'm gonna click the orb button. Now, it's interesting to try and describe what this does. It's basically a sound manipulation tool. It's been described as an intuitive performance interface and also a circular controller, and both those descriptions fit. It's basically used to randomize and change aspects of the sound, and hopefully get some serendipity, some nice happy accidents that result in nice variations to your sound. Now here's the sound as it is now. Here it is with a little part and a drum groove. Now we turn it on with the power button. And basically the idea is as the orb moves around these circles, it morphs between automatically generated parameter scenes. So let me play this little region and move this around and you'll hear variations in the sound being generated. I'm just going to drag this slider to stop it and we'll talk about that in a moment. Now the results are based on radius and angle controls and the angle defines which parameters are going to be manipulated and radius determines the intensity, how much they're gonna be manipulated. Now, the idea is that the closer to the edges of the circles that we move the cursor, the more dramatic the changes will be. And we can press clear to always revert back to the original sound. Now, the overall intensity of the modifications are determined with this depth slider. So let me do this again and I'll minimize the depth and you'll hear less variations to the sound. So not very much happening there. Let's dial it up a bit. So that's how the depth slider controls the intensity. Now let's put it back up so we can really hear what it's doing. And we can press this dice button if we don't like what parameters are being modified. Press that and an entirely new set of sound modifications will be in place to be manipulated. I'll roll them again. So you can have a lot of fun and when you find a setting that you like, you can save this as a new patch or with your patch and it'll be saved that way. So this is great for static changes and hoping for some serendipity and then saving what you've got. But the real fun becomes when we get movement within the orb, and that's where this inertia control comes in. Now, the inertia controls of the orb, they allow the creation of a kind of movement trail after letting go of the orb based on the strength of this slider. So let me dial it up here. And the idea is that you just spin it and it keeps moving. and this will determine how much movement will happen. And when we dial it down, there's no trail at all. Now we have an attractor mode, and this is new in Omnisphere 2.0, and this causes the orb cursor to behave kind of like a non-linear pendulum. So the trajectory leads to points that are far apart, so it's a little bit more wild and random. Now let's put the slider up. So it's a lot of fun playing with this. Let's put it down there for now. And let's put it back to the center. Let's hit clear to go back to the beginning. And what we can do also is record the movements of this if we want to save some of these. Now we have different trigger modes when we're recording. We can work in song position or legato, and I think you know what those are by now. This will follow the song position versus based on the note on events. Let's leave it in song position for the moment. Now we have different ways of capturing what's happening here. We have motion or then a specific number of bars. Now let's look at motion. It captures the speed and the trajectory of the orb when we throw it for a few seconds, and then it generates a full orbit cycle from those movements. Now it's not intended to record precise movements. This is Again, leaving a certain random element at play. And basically all we need to do is hit the record button and then throw the orb around. So 
So you see it's red when it's playing back the recorded pattern. Let's hit record again. Let's hit clear. And we're back at the beginning. Now we can also record specific lengths of time and that'll sync to your host tempo. So here it's set to one bar and you'll see it's flashing red and when it gets to the next bar, it's gonna start recording. So it turned solid red when it was recording and recorded a bar's movement and it creates a loop of it. So as I play it now, it'll play that loop over and over again. Let's clear it and try it again. Flashing red. So now it'll create a loop of that movement that I dragged around with my mouse. and you can have one, two, or four bars. So let's hit clear and go back to the default. Now we can also automate these parameters. We can right click on here and enable host automation and that'll automate the angle. Let me just hide this for a moment and we'll go to automation mode and you'll see in this particular DAW that we have the levels, but there's the orb angle. So we can actually record movements that way if you wanna get a more controlled version of this. And we can right click and go switch to radius in order to record the radius movements. And similarly, we can MIDI learn these parameters. I can go MIDI CC learn, dial a knob, and there I've learned one of those by moving a controller and we can right click and go switch to angle, the other one that you're on and learn another one. And finally, the orb itself can be used as a modulation source and it refers to the dice. When you press the dice and randomize it, it's used as a modulation source. When we go into our sources here, you'll see we have our LFOs, some random elements, our mod envelopes, our different controller gestures, and orb. So you can use that to modulate parameters. See you for more in the next video.